Welcome to this tutorial for testing process model 2 for R, that is a moderation analysis with two moderators that don't interact with each other. In this video I'm going to show you how to test a model like this with process for R and how to interpret the results. Process for R is not a package, but it's a user-defined function. And before we can use process for R, we have to run the code of this file process.r in order to initialize the process function. You can download this file from Hay's website. You'll find a link in the description of this video. Running this code takes a minute or two. In this video I'll be cutting to the point in time where this has finished. Now process is ready for use. First let's look at our data. We have an independent variable, two moderators, a dependent variable and in this example we have two covariates. Here we find a basic syntax we could use in order to test our model given our data structure. It starts with a function name process, then the name of the data frame we are analyzing, then the names of the dependent variable, independent variable and the two moderators, the model number, model 2, and in this case the two covariates. There are some important rules if you want to use process with R. First you have to put the variable names between quotation signs. Then R is case sensitive, so it makes a difference whether you write dv in uppercase or lowercase letters. The function name itself, process, has to be in lowercase letters. And finally, you are not allowed to use factor variables. So if you have a factor variable, you have to recode it first into numeric variable before you can include it in the process function. In general, I don't use this basic syntax because I think there are a lot of additional options that are quite helpful. So here you can find my recommendation which code to use. Again, the process name, the data frame, the names of the variables, the model number and in our case the covariates. And then we are coming to the additional parameters. Here HC4. With this we are requesting a robust standard error. That is a standard error that is robust even if you have heteroscedasticity. So using this robust standard error you don't need to check for homoscedasticity anymore. The next line are four parameters about bootstrapping. I tend to use bootstrapping in order not to have to worry about possible violations of the normality assumption, at least if my sample size is about 50 or higher. First I request bootstrap confidence intervals for all parameter estimates. Then I set the number of bootstrap samples to 5000. With this I change the bootstrap method from the default value of percentile bootstrap to the bias corrected bootstrap. And with this I am setting a seed value for the random numbers generator because bootstrapping is a random process so each time even with the same data you run bootstrapping normally you would get slightly different results. But in order to write down the results I prefer to get the same results each time I run the code with the same data. And I can accomplish this with setting the seed value for the random numbers generator. It could be any integer number. The moments parameter here changes the default values for the simple slopes, that is for the conditional effects. And with this parameter I change it to minus one standard deviation, mean and plus one standard deviation. And the center option set to two, mean centers all continuous variables that are part of products, that is the independent variable and the two moderators. That's recommended in moderation analysis in order to make the interpretation a little bit easier. You'll find the code in the description of this video, so there you can just copy and paste. One important thing to keep in mind, process runs regression analyses and regressions have assumptions. And if those assumptions are not met, you are not allowed to interpret the results because then the results can be seriously biased. 
unfortunately, process can check those assumptions for you. If you want to know more about how to deal with this problem, I've made a video about assumption checks for process models. You'll find the link to that video tutorial in the description as well. So now let's run the code. It starts with a model number and the variable names. I recommend checking that you really have used the correct variable names. Next I'm going to the end of the output. Here are analysis notes and errors. And I think it's a good practice to check whether you have er any error messages before spending time with the interpretation of the output. In this case there are no errors, so we can interpret the output. This is our regression model. First the model summary. You can interpret this as you would interpret any model summary for a multiple regression. It's significant, so all predictors, including the interactions, taken together significantly predict the variance of the dependent variable. Here you see HC4, so this p-value is calculated with a robust standard error. That is robust against possible heteroscedasticity. Here is your regression table. There are two interactions, because we have two moderators. And down here we can see which interaction number corresponds to which interaction. So interaction 1 is the interaction between the independent variable and the first moderator, and interaction 2 the interaction between the independent variable and the second moderator. And here we can see both interactions are significant. So both moderators significantly moderate the effect from the independent variable on the dependent variable. Here we find tests of highest order unconditional interactions. Those two p-values for the two interactions are the same as in the regression table. And down here both this test, whether both interactions taken together explain significantly additional variance of the dependent variable. This column R2 change normally is called delta R square, and that's the additional variance explained by the interaction. So that's an effect size for moderation. Since our interactions were significant, now we would like to interpret the simple slopes or the conditional effects. So those are the effects from the independent variable on the dependent variable for those combinations of the first moderator and the second moderator. And here the moments parameter comes into play that we had set to 1. So this is minus 1 standard deviation, this is the mean, and this is plus 1 standard deviation. So to interpret the first row, for moderator 1 with minus 1 standard deviation, and a moderator 2 with minus 1 standard deviation. So for low values for both moderators, this would be the effect, but it would be not be significant. Or in this case, for moderator 1 with plus 1 standard deviation, and a moderator 2 with a mean, that is, for high values of moderator 1 and average values of moderator 2, this would be the effect of the independent variable on the dependent variable, and would be significant. And finally, we would like to check whether the results are robust against possible violations of the normality assumption. Here we find the bootstrap results. So this is again the regression table, but in this table we don't find p-values. Instead, we find bootstrap confidence intervals, the lower limit and the upper limit of this confidence interval. And if a confidence interval does not include zero, so if both limits are negative, or if both limits are positive, then the regression weight is significantly different from zero. And here for our two interactions, we see in both cases the zero is not included in the confidence interval, so bootstrapping confirms that both interactions are significant. So that's it for process model 2 with R. If you like this video, make sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel. Just click on the subscribe button below this video. Thank you so much for watching.